All right, hello everyone. I want to talk about a very important topic that applies to all history, not just American history, Western civilization, Middle East, but all the, the different histories around the world. And it is the story of erasing history. But I want to focus, of course, what's going on mainly in the United States, because it is incredibly dangerous what we are doing by destroying the names and stories of our past because they make us uncomfortable today. Uh, and there's, it's, it, it's a never ending spiral that's going to eventually destroy everything that we know about who we are. And so where this all began, of course, was several years ago with the story of the Confederate monuments, right? So we have these Confederate statues and monuments throughout the South. And I remember uh, saying when this first was becoming a story several years ago that, that you know, it's not going to end there, that people are not going to be satisfied with just getting rid of Confederate statues. Because the moment we start down this path, then what is going to be okay and what's not going to be okay, and this constant attempt to, to, to measure people of the past by who we are today is never ending and it will never satisfy the appetite of those who want to be quote unquote pure as pure could be and there'll be nothing left standing these confederate statues of course for many people rightfully so represent racism represent uh segregationist represent slavery represent a lot of very negative things and rightfully so but these are also part of history and the answer is not necessarily to get rid of these, but to teach the story about them, the entire story. Uh, teach who these individuals were, what did they believe in, why do we need to learn from it, um, and not just bury it and in, 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 in say, well, you know, people go there and they celebrate it. That sometimes you'll hear, well, what about the problem of them being celebrated? They don't necessarily need to be celebrated. They could still stand as, as places to remember what had happened as part of our history. I mean, take a look at this. Auschwitz. Auschwitz stands today, right? And very, I haven't heard of anybody yet saying, hey, let's get rid of Auschwitz. Uh, we shouldn't get rid of Auschwitz. It should be there. It should stand as a place for people to study the history and the evils of what had happened during the Holocaust. And those Confederate statues can also stay there. And I know some people say, very, I think this is a very good argument, in fact, that maybe they should just be put into museums and leave them in museums. And I would concede that point, that that would be a fair kind of compromise. And if that's where it ended, okay but that's not where it's ending and that's the problem and it's even in museums now that people are having an issues and not even just with confederate statues right this is where things have gotten a bit out of control and while i think you can make a fair argument that maybe something like confederate statues shouldn't be celebrated in the middle of a town square the idea of just removing every element of history and everything and everything that's ever been named doesn't end there and you're going to see as as I continue on with some more examples. So this is interesting. In June of 2020 there was a statue of Theodore Roosevelt that was removed from the Museum of Natural History. They're removing sculptures of of former presidents of the United States that by today's standards in 2020 when this was decided Theodore Roosevelt, by the standards of the people who made this decision, was not able to be have his 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 imagery. It was a statue, I believe, on a horse uh, in in the museum. So where does this end, right? Then you have to start thinking: if we can't have Theodore Roosevelt in 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 a museum, where does the story end? And remember, I started with the Confederate statues, and I, I started that way for a reason. You'll see why as I finish this kind of brief little uh, discussion on this. So where does it end? Well, let's look at some other historical stories. So one historical story very few people are familiar with is this thing called the massacre, um, a massacre that took place after the siege of a city called Akko. So there was this big siege during the Third Crusade, right? This takes us back to, you know, centuries ago uh, during the Middle Ages. And in the city of Akko, the king, Richard the Lionheart, had a great victory. He captured a whole bunch of Muslim soldiers and marched them off to a nearby city away from Akko and massacred them, as you can see in the image here. So this was Richard I, Richard the Lionhearted, uh, who, who massacred thousands of unarmed Muslim uh, individuals after this, this siege of Akko. 
today, you go to England, and right outside of the Parliament in Britain, a sculpture of Richard the Lionhearted. By the logic of removing Theodore Roosevelt, by the logic of removing anybody who is not to today's standards, we couldn't have this sculpture outside the Parliament of England. Heck, <laughs> you couldn't have any monarch of any, any British monarch in any public place uh, inside a museum or out, because let's face it, they were not the nicest folks. Um, you know, and you go down the list of what these, what these British monarchs did, and not just British monarchs, but take monarchs from any nation around the globe at any time, you're not gonna find very good pure people that would be pure enough again to have monument standing. So that would have to go down. It's not just people. It's also monuments well, to people without an image of them, but just the monument itself. So for example, this is an arch called the Arch of Titus. This is in Rome in the Forum in Italy. It's the entrance to the Forum. Again, a story many people don't know. This goes back even further time, ancient history, ancient Roman time. The Roman emperor will be Titus. And one of the things Titus did is he was known for helping to sack the city of Jerusalem. He, he destroyed uh, the second temple of the Jewish people. Uh, if you look in the arch of Titus and you look in the inside of the arch there, you would see the, the, and the images of the Jewish um, um, properties and, and treasures being taken, looted from Jerusalem. And here's the Arch of Titus. It still stands there. Now, Jewish people know this story. And when Jewish people go to Rome, tradition is they don't walk underneath the arch. They walk around it uh, because of the negative connotations. But I've yet to hear anybody say, hey, let's tear down this Arch of Titus. And of course, it wouldn't just be the Arch of Titus. If you tear that down, this thing can't be standing. You can't have the Colosseum, guys, right? The Colosseum. Let's, let's, <laughs> I think it's one of the most, uh, you know, magnificent buildings in history, one of the most iconic buildings in history, but also, of course, a, a monument where you had human beings slaughtered to death, including, of course, Christians um, who were just rounded up simply because of their faith and kill. And so I can give you examples from ancient times, I give you examples from Middle Ages, and I can give you more examples from modern times. So we can go into the 1800s AD, and very famous figure, of course, from France, the Arc de Triomphe of Napoleon. And, you know, people who study Napoleon, I've studied quite a bit of Napoleon. Uh, Napoleon's a fascinating figure. He is this individual who, on one hand, I tell my students, is a child of the Enlightenment, you know, had the ideas of Rousseau and Locke and Montesquieu. On the other hand, he declared himself Holy Roman Emperor, right? At a time period where people were getting rid of kings. And he's saying, I want to be an emperor. Um, and he obviously went after his opponents in a very draconian manner. Uh, so should this be standing? You know, it's, it's a monument forever connected with Napoleon. And again, you go further into our modern times, Franklin Roosevelt. How many schools are named after Franklin Roosevelt? Many. Um, and Franklin Roosevelt is, of course, President of the United States during World War II, through the Depression. Um, and, of course, Franklin Roosevelt was also president when we had the Japanese internment camps. This one specifically, Manzanar, very famous one or infamous one, I should say, uh, that that is also part of our history. So should we not have anything named after Franklin Roosevelt? Again, by that logic that we are using now, none of this should stand. And people say, well, this, this they're not going to do that. Well, let's go to where we started from, the Confederate monuments, right? What finally got me to make this video was that in 2020, um, reading a story, San Francisco, they want to rename um, schools named after Abraham Lincoln. So what started as getting rid of a Confederate monument, right, let this sink in, has now gotten to the point that the person fighting against the Confederate monument, the Confederacy, the person leading the fight against the Confederacy is still not pure enough. What's left, guys? What's left? Washington, Jefferson, Lincoln, Theodore Roosevelt, all of Mount Rushmore, right? It, it, it would all have to, to, to come down. And there's a point where you really got to ponder, this doesn't make sense anymore. And it's a, it's a real danger. And you go, oh, is it really that big of a deal? It is. And I want to kind of give you a quote here. And this is a quote from a very important book, 1984, George Orwell. 
Every record has been destroyed or falsified. Every book rewritten. Every picture has been repainted. Every statue and street building has been renamed. Every date has been altered. And the process is continuing day by day, minute by minute. History has stopped. Nothing exists except an endless present in which the party is always right. Orwell, 1984. If we keep going down this path, anything we name today by people we admire today, I promise you a hundred years from now, people will look at those individuals and say, nope, not good enough. We are actually destroying ourselves, not just the past. And so you really have to think hard about this. Every time you hear about, hey, let's rename something. Hey, let's get rid of something. They don't meet up by today's standards. That's not the answer. The answer is you teach everything. You understand the history. You understand, you know, and people act as though slavery is some unique uh, element of American history. Guys, slavery has been around since the dawn of civilization. Uh, American history is one civilization that fought and gave a lot of blood to end it, um, in fact, right? Uh, and if you look at slavery, it's been global in terms of the slave from Africa. It didn't start with, you know, the the trade into the colonies by the Europeans, you could trace that back all the way to the Umayyad dynasty, an Islamic dynasty that ruled the Middle East, and they had slaves coming, uh, pushing people into slavery from Africa. Uh, you know, the Umayyads have monuments all over the Middle East. Should we get rid of those, right? It's like it's truly endless and very dangerous. So I do hope you think about this and you ponder this when you, when you hear people saying, hey, let's rename this building. Hey, let's rename that building. The answer is not renaming everything. The answer is teaching the history, teaching the good, teaching the bad, and teaching it from the perspective of understanding people at that time period and not always by what we think is okay today. Uh, because I promise you, as I said, 100 years from now, we're going to look really stupid in the eyes of a lot of people as well. Uh, so again, stuff to think about. Um, hope you found that important and interesting. Uh, and that's it. I want you just to, to have that, that, that there for you to, to, to look at. All right. Thank you, everyone.